This is Ilya with Worn and Wound, and today we're going to take a look at the Grand Seiko Elegance GMT, reference SBGM221. Grand Seiko was founded in 1960, and it marked the start of Seiko's efforts to produce high-end watches that could compete against those being put out by the Swiss. In 1962, legendary Seiko designer Taro Tanaka developed a series of rules dubbed the Grammar of Design, and these rules would go on to inform Grand Seiko's design language for decades to come. In 1972, Grand Seiko stopped production for a period of about 16 years, until the brand was revived in 1988 with Grand Seiko's first quartz watch, the 95GS. It wasn't until 1998 that Grand Seiko released the 9S5 Mechanical Series, which marked Grand Seiko's first new mechanical caliber in 20 years. Grand Seiko is a true vertical manufacturer. They produce everything from the dials and cases down to the quartz crystals inside their 9F movements. Last year, I got the chance to visit Grand Seiko in Japan, and getting to see the watches come together, that awesome blend of handcraft and industrial production, was really something to behold. The watch that we're looking at today is one of my favorites in Grand Seiko's current catalog. In fact, it's a watch that I own. Reference SBGM221 is part of Grand Seiko's Elegance range, which is home to Grand Seiko's Dress Your Time pieces. At $4,600, it's priced on the lower end for a Grand Seiko mechanical watch, but it's by no means a lesser timepiece. In fact, it's a great value for what you get, so let's jump right in. The case measures 39.5 millimeters wide, 14.5 millimeters thick, and 46.3 millimeters lug to lug. 39 millimeters is a bit of a sweet spot, and while 14.5 millimeters reads somewhat thick on paper, the case itself doesn't look too thick, nor does it wear especially tall on the wrist. In part, that's because the mid-case isn't a giant slab, and the thickness is distributed among the mid-case, the dome crystal, and the case back. The case back is also bowl-shaped, and that, combined with the curved lugs, allows for a really nice fit on the wrist. One of the things that I really love about Grand Seiko is the brand's commitment to impeccable finishing. And for the price, I really believe you won't find a better finished watch. Let's take a look at the case. At first glance, it might just look like a typical polished case. But note the quality of that polish, and pay extra attention to the sharp bevels on the lugs. Grand Seiko is known for something called Zaratsu polishing, and it's a key reason why Grand Seiko watches look as good as they do. The word Zaratsu is derived from the word Zalatz, the name of a vintage polishing machine Seiko brought over from Switzerland in the 1950s. These machines are relatively rare today, and they're no longer really used by the Swiss, so Grand Seiko and a handful of other mostly Japanese makers stand out in this regard. Zaratsu polishing is what makes it possible for Grand Seiko to create those clearly defined points where plain meets plain. Polishing this way takes a long time to master, and Grand Seiko only allows their most experienced craftspeople to perform this function. But this high level of finish isn't just reserved for the case. Let's turn to the dial side of the watch. The hands are razor sharp, the sculpted indices, applied Grand Seiko insignia, and the frame around the date window are all perfectly finished, and the dial printing is incredibly precise. I've looked at this dial through a loop many times, and it's perfect. And that's the cool thing about Grand Seiko. Getting a perfectly finished watch is the rule and not the exception. Now let's look at the applied indices in hands. A single applied index has nine perfectly cut and polished surfaces, except that the cardinal spots where they're doubled. Here you have 12 distinct surfaces. When you factor in how small these markers are, the precision here becomes all the more impressive. The diamond cut hands are classic Grand Seiko. They're broad tapering blades with razor sharp bevels along the edge. And just like the indices, the finishing here is without fault. The second hand is a simple stick with a bent tip and a counterweight. The GMT hand is a heat blued arrow, and it's a nice visual contrast against the other hands in dial. By the way, these hands aren't blued in some mass industrial process. No, they're blued by hand, one by one. I've seen it myself, and it's really cool. The dial is cream colored, so it has a pleasing warmth to it, and the printed text is black. Once again, as far as quality goes, the printing here is beyond reproach. Powering the watch is Grand Seiko's automatic 9S66 caliber. It features a 3-day power reserve, a beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour, 35 joules, it's regulated to 6 positions, and it's rated to an impressive plus 5, minus 3 seconds a day. The 9S66 is a true GMT. It features a jumping local hour hand, which means that you can jump the hour hand forward or backward to set your watch to the new local time after you've crossed time zones. And then the 24-hour hand remains linked to home time or any other time zone you'd like to track. Because the hour hand jumps in both directions via the crown, there's no traditional quick set date here. To advance the date quickly, you have to jump the hour hand past midnight until you reach your desired date. Honestly, it sounds more tedious than it really is, and I'd argue that the trade-off is well worth it for the true GMT functionality. 
Visible through the open case back, the 9S66 is a technically impressive movement. Microelectromechanical Systems, otherwise known as MEMS, is a highly advanced semiconductor manufacturing technology, and it's employed by Grand Seiko here to produce lightweight precision parts for their 9S calibers. Using MEMS, Grand Seiko can produce escape wheels that are 5% lighter and pallet forks that are 25% lighter. Grand Seiko also has their own anti-magnetic hairspring alloys, the latest of which is Spron 610, which is highly resistant against shocks, magnetism, corrosion, and heat. The SBGM221 comes on a 19mm alligator strap with a folding deployant. Both are well made and up to par with the quality found on the rest of the watch. That said, I'm not a huge fan of deploying buckles, nor do I really like alligator straps, so I opted for something a bit more dressed down here. Certainly straps are always a matter of preference, but I do think this watch looks best on tan or brown leather. I find that the warmer leather looks great with the cream dial and the blue GMT hand. If I had one knock against this watch, it would be the water resistance. At just three atmospheres, it's a little disappointing. I don't expect dive watch specs here, but I prefer something a little bit more robust. To sum up, at $4,600, what you're getting here is a level of precision, mastery, and design that blows the competition away. And I really mean that without any hyperbole on my part. People often talk about Grand Seiko offering amazing bang for buck value in the luxury segment, and they're not wrong. As you can see from everything that we've covered here today, this is a hell of a watch and truly worthy of the moniker Grand. If you enjoyed this review, hit the thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also, visit warnaround.com daily for news and reviews of great wristwatches. Thanks, bye.